Alfa Romeo wants to share with Ferrari, Aston Martin gets four extra cans, and a mystery Mazda gets double takes online. I'm Carrie Milbank, and you are watching Fast Lane Daily. Fast Lane Daily with Tamarie Bill. Today's Fast Lane Daily is brought to you by Factory, Spike's first original comedy, Sundays at 10 p.m. The next Alfa 8C Competizione may share a few of its naughty bits with the Ferrari California. That is, if Alfa Romeo bosses can strike a, quote, difficult deal with its corporate cousins from Marinette. Speed TV reports the deal could see the next-gen Slinky Alpha powered by Ferrari's latest 4.3-liter direct-injection V8 and riding on running gear derived from the prancing horse's latest GT car. But Alpha bosses still have to convince Ferrari the deal would benefit both companies as well as corporate parent Fiat. Either way, the successor to the Alfa Romeo 8C will likely be ready to go by 2010. No, it's not a horse and buggy strike vehicle used by the Mega Amish. This oddball SUV is the Kurt Equine Trainer. It's built on a Ford F-150 chassis and gets its power not from Seabiscuit up front, but by a Volvo five-cylinder diesel engine. The trainer comes with computerized heart, blood, oxygen, and fitness monitors, electronically controlled reins, and accessories, including a simulated jockey. Performance tuning company Roush developed and built the racehorse runner for Kurt Systems of Turkey a supplier of racehorse and camel training gear. No word on price, but we hear the Mega Amish have already planned a preemptive strike against their arch rivals, the Ultra Mennonites. Tighten up your bonnets and watch out. And what happens when your subjects make more wine than they can sell? Oh right, just convert the Royal Aston Martin to run on this stuff. UK media reports Prince Charles had his 1970 Aston Martin DB6 converted to run on bioethanol. Turns out the Prince's supplier makes his biofuel from surplus British wine. The Daily Mail reports the converted roadster gets about 10 miles per gallon. That's the equivalent of four and a half wine bottles per mile. The green savvy Charles also uses environmentally sensitive sewage and heating systems at his royal residences and recently installed solar heating in the Tower of London. Oh yeah? Well, I only use one square. Take that. What happens when you give an Aston Martin four extra cylinders and it's either a Mazda 3 or Chris Bangle just exploded? That's in the internet rumor mill right after this. <laughs> On the next Garage 419. If you drive a high performance car on the street, you're barely into the pedal. Yeah. New episodes of Garage 419, Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> Do you like heavy machinery? I know I do. So check out Spike's original series, Factory, Sundays at 10 p.m. Check it out on Spike. So what does happen when you shoehorn a V12 into an Aston Martin V8 Vantage? Well, the company gave us a little hint last year when it showed off the Vantage RS concept. Aston officials said it was only a styling exercise, but you can't fool us, we're no dummies. The V12-powered Vantage has again been spotted lapping Germany's Nürburgring. Insiders say the 12-pot Vantage will come with 600 horsepower by way of the same engine as the company's flagship DBS. That's the 6-liter 12-pack producing 509 pounds feet of torque. So what price for four extra cylinders? Well, insiders say the Vantage V12 will go for more than double the V8's six-figure sticker price. Ouch. And finally, is it a clever Photoshop or the latest concept car from the minds of Mazda? Online car fans are deliberating today over a photo set appearing on World Car Fans. The photos show a five-door hatchback whose styling mimics Mazda's most recent concept cars. Those are the ones Mazda designers say follow the company's Nagare design language set to appear on Mazda's next generation vehicles. So what do you think? Let us know in the comments section. That's gonna wrap up Fastlane Daily for today. I'm Carrie Melbank, eh? Happy Canada Day. Happy fucking Canada Day. <laughs>